YouTube. I am Pinstar and this is Dwarf Fortress Strategy and Tactics Quick Tip. So today we're going to show you how to encrust specific objects to maximize profits. When you get your trader, one of the things that the trader will tell you is one or more types of goods that next year they will be willing to pay a lot more for. In my current playthrough, we were informed by our first year traders that toys are going to be in high demand next year and that they are going to pay 203% more for them. So we have a whole year to capitalize on that. The first and simplest way to capitalize on that is, well, make toys. But we can do even better than that. You see, we have to our name quite a few cut gems. Now, they're not offering 203% more to cut gems, but what they will do is if we encrust the object that they are offering a premium to with gems, that will inflate the value of that object and therefore basically apply that 203% multiplier to the total value of that object. So it is worth our while to encrust those those objects. But you might be saying, well, Pinstar, how do I do that? Because if we go here to the jeweler's workshop and we look at all the different things, yeah, there's encrust finished goods with cut gems, but it, there's no way to pick what specific gem or what specific object. And while picking a specific gem is not really something that we can do, oh, actually we can, but it's not as important. What we really care about is just encrusting any kind of gem, but we want to specifically encrust toys. So let me show you how you set that up with a series of different workshops here. So here we have a metalsmith's forge and we have that set to forge billion toys. Billion being a metal, it's basically a hybrid between copper and silver. Not very useful for functional purposes, but worth a, a decent amount on the open market. So making toys out of them is not a bad thing. So we are having this forge these billion toys. And then we are telling this forge to deposit the toys to the gems and toys stockpile. That is this one right here, the gems and toys stockpile. This stockpile is set to two except two things, finished goods of type toys. And here we only want to accept metal and gems and other materials. We don't actually want the stone toys, although we are making plenty of stone toys, but we're just gonna sell those straight up. On this particular workshop here, we have a job in crust finished goods with cut gem, but importantly, we have it so that it only takes goods from the gems and toys. So essentially there might be other finished goods elsewhere in the fort, but this workshop is not going to grab them and encrust them. It's only going to take whatever's in here. So when we have these toys finished here, they get dropped off here. So here we have a billion toy boat with by itself worth a hundred. Now we also have this thing to deposit finished toys here to the stockpile called finished toys. This is the finished toy stock. Stockpile. A couple of things to note here. Here we have any finished good, but when you create a stockpile, most of the time this is turned on. This, this little icon right here, this basically says accept things from anywhere in the fort that meet the criteria of this stockpile. And for a general use stockpile like this, yeah, we absolutely want that. But here, we want this stockpile to basically be the, the toys that have been properly finished here and no others. We don't want unfinished toys brought here. So we turn that off so that the stockpile can only accept goods from specifically linked workshops. The only workshop that is linked to deposit into this stockpile is this one. And we can see that a billion puzzle box has been already encrusted. See these little two brackets here? The little asterisk gives you the idea of the quality of the object itself. The brackets tell you that it's been encrusted with something. And if we look at here, this is a superior quality billion puzzle box and it menaces with spikes of tiger eye. Tiger eye being the gem. Your dwarves will sometimes encrust several different gems into a single item and that's fine. Every time they do that, it adds to the value of the toy here. And again, because because an encrusted toy and a regular toy are still quote unquote toys, they're still getting that 203% value bonus at next year's trader. So now we see these octagon cut praises here. So now we have double encrusted. So now we have octagon cut praises and tiger's eye, and now it's worth about 200. It's nearly doubled in value. So don't worry about a single toy getting multiple encrusted to it. 
that's not necessarily a bad thing. And we have more toys being dropped off here. There's our puzzle box. And now we have a couple of other little toy things that are ready for encrusting. We just need for our gem setter to come back and grab a gem because we also have this whole big box full of gems, which we have our raw gem, a repeat cut gem thing set to deposit the gems into here so that there's a ready supply of cut gems. There we go. Dana Black going for it. Oh, he, was, he just had a mail. And now we have an encrusted billion mini forge. And that, with one thing, did well. So you can see on here, after the brackets, there's these little dashes. That means the encrusting, the actual act of encrusting, was a superior encrusting. So the encrusting actually added more value than just the base value of the gems to it. And once again, it's all going to get multiplied by that 203% when we go to trade. So that is how you you can add value to objects that your traders have specifically asked for. Encrust them, and this is how you tell your dwarves specifically to make those things, encrust those things, and get them ready for next year's trader. If you guys like this episode and you want to see more like it, go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and leave me a comment. Good, bad, or indifferent, your feedback's always welcome. So until next time, it's been Pinstar signing out. See ya!